Hi, I'm Dr. Woods. I teach bassoon and music elective classes here at Grand Canyon University. And these are the region and all state etudes for 2023, 2024. Number one is marked Maestoso. So bring a majestic character to it. It should have strong weight to the starts of the notes, not accented unless they're marked as accented, but, but a little heavier feel to it. Uh, there are some tricky rhythms with the quarter note triplets. Make sure that you're being accurate with those. Uh, don't lose your sense of tempo in the trills. Sometimes it can be easy. We're so busy thinking about wiggling the fingers. We lose that sense of time during trills. So make sure that you're actually practicing this one without any trills or embellishments to start so that you get a solid sense of the underlying rhythm and then you can go back and add those. Otherwise, the really important thing to keep track of in here is the dynamics. There are a lot of hairpin dynamics, crescendo and decrescendos marked in here. And you can really kind of overdo, like if it's marked mezzo piano, for example, you might want to just scratch out the mezzo and go for piano, just so you know that you're getting some big dynamic contrast that everybody can hear. <laughs> number two is a lyrical etude. It's marked lento. Double check that tempo. It's eighth note equals 66. It's also marked appassionato, so with passion. There are a lot of big slurred intervals in this one. Since it is our lyrical etude, the goal is going to be to have those be as smooth as possible and have the energy carrying from note to note so that we don't have gaps in the sound or the trajectory of our phrase shapes. There's also a very tricky rhythmic issue that happens in full measure three. Uh, so be careful that you count that out, mark the beats if needed, play it without the ties if needed, so that you have a very, very strong sense of the rhythm in measures three and four. This one uh, has some very nice musical moments in it. The overall phrase shape is going to be con to crescendo to that second bar of the second line and then decrescendo all the way down to the end to a very nice, sweet, appassionato ending. <laughs> Number three is marked Vivo, and it is marked at a very quick tempo. I strongly recommend that as you are learning this etude, that you put your eighth note as getting the beat and work on it slowly. Then, as you start to feel comfortable with the rhythms and the notes and the dynamics, then maybe start to experiment with speeding things up. As judges, we typically are most happy to hear things a little under tempo and clean rather than really, really fast and having it fall apart. So make sure that you're feeling solid and that you take it a tempo that you know that you can do it at cleanly and reliably. Uh, there are a few tricky rhythm things, a uh, couple of tricky things in the fingerings, little noodly things, but really in general the, the goal of this one is going to be to be clean and be solid.
So if you're planning to audition for Allstate, you'll also need to work on etudes numbers 4 and 5. Etude number 4 is March-like in character, and it's another fast etude, so you might expect my recommendation is that you start it out slow. This one has uh, some things that when it starts to go at a faster tempo, the fingerings can get really tricky. So again, you want to make sure that you're practicing it slowly, that you're really solid on the notes and on the technique, and that you speed it up very gradually. There's a little bit of two against three that happens in the third line. Um, and again, it's really nice if we can get some very big dynamic contrasts. In this one, he mostly relies on pianos and fortes. So really make sure that your fortes are big and full, and that your pianos, or even the little pianissimos, are very, very soft. Etude number five is another lyrical or slow etude. I think this one is actually one of my favorites. It's in the key center of C sharp minor, which has a really kind of sweet and sad sound to it. I think if you can really bring that out in your playing, it'll really give it that extra little bit. Um, so what's trickiest about this one is probably the rhythm issues that happen in the second line. Make sure you're being really careful with all of the twos and the, the 16th rests and then switching between the twos and the threes uh, just making sure that all of that stays really uh, within a strict sense of time you can play with the time a little bit on this one it can have a little bit of rubato considering that it's a slow uh, and lyrical etude but if you decide to bring in some rubato don't let it change the overall sense of the tempo if you take some extra time in one place, then you've got to make it up somewhere else and compress the time a little bit so that if I was beating a solid tempo over your entire performance, uh, we would still end in the same place, whether or not we were keeping strict time or if we were using rubato. <laughs> Thanks for checking these videos out and good luck on your audition. Remember, your practice should be lots of slow practice with the metronome, being really mindful of the rhythms and the articulations and all those little details. Save the speeding up for once you're feeling really solid and confident on what's on the page, then you can start experimenting with bumping up the metronome. Overall, we want to hear you having a really accurate and clean performance. And I hope you enjoy uh, you know, working on these etudes. Uh, remember, it's all about growing yourself as a musician. And it's awesome that you're taking on this challenge and pushing yourself. And it's really uh, going to have a huge effect on who you are as a musician. So good luck and take care.